2017 Chevy Corvette Z06. It has a Z07 package on it. Came with the stage two spoiler, stage two splitter, carbon ceramic brakes, some other little visuals. Mainly the Z07 package is just suspension. I've had it for about two and a half years now. I bought it with 1,400 miles on it. It's got about 11,000 on it now. Were you looking specifically for this car? Yeah, and it actually took me quite a bit of time to find. It took me about three months, and I ended up having to get it out of Frederick, Maryland. I was really particular. I wanted this color. I wanted the Z07 package for all the ground effects. I didn't care if it was an automatic or a manual because I was so picky with everything else. The only thing that this car had when I bought it that I didn't like was chrome wheels, so I swapped the wheels out for black. My previous car I had heavily modified. It was to the point that it wasn't even reliable anymore. Anymore. So I wanted to modify this. I didn't want to keep it stock. I wanted to have a little bit of an edge, but I still wanted to keep reliability in it. So stock off the floor, mm -hmm. what are you talking about as far as horsepower wise? The factory rates them at 650. Realistically on a dyno, that's uh, probably about 540 or so. And the car weighs? Like 36 or 3,700 pounds. Now where are you horsepower wise? So without spray, it's making 728. With spray, it's making 870. So a gigantic leap in horsepower. Correct. So you said slightly modified. You were lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's still reliable though. And that's the LS platform, right? LT. The, the LT platform. Tell everybody what the difference is. One of the biggest differences is the LSs are port injected. And then this is direct port. This is actually a direct injected engine with the injector straight into the cylinders. It's good and it's bad. It's really hard to upgrade the fuel system on a direct injected motor versus port injection. I like the LSs. That's one of the big downfalls to it, but there is a lot of advantages to it. Where'd you start? I basically started from bone stock and did the build all at the same time. I collected all the parts and I took the car to the shop. I handed them the parts. I said, build the car. Whenever the car went to the shop, it was originally not going to have nitrous. And that got added while the build was being done. What but, influenced you to do that? So I was going to do heads on it. Heads were going to run me between two and $3,000. The guy that was building the car and tuning the car, he's like, for two or $3,000, you're only going to pick up 20 to 30 horsepower it's really not worth spending the money i'm like okay so i was on the forums i was browsing around looking around and there was a guy selling the nitrous kit brand new still in the box for like 50 percent off he just wanted to get rid of it so i got a hold of blake what about if we go nitrous on the car you know is it going to be reliable am i going to run into issues he goes no we could do that i said okay i said well i got a really good deal on it instead of putting two to three thousand dollars in heads let's put it in nitrous and we'll pick up a lot more power how much of a jump was that about 140 horsepower with spray there's minor variances in the suspension. It's basically just the way it's tuned. The big thing is the carbon ceramic brakes. The brakes on this thing are massive. It's good for a road track. That's kind of the only thing that I wish I didn't have was the brakes because I can't get a smaller wheel on the back of it. Is that something that's in the works perhaps? Is changing that or is it too complicated? They make conversions. You can do a 15 inch, you can do a 17 inch conversion, but you got to obviously pull the brakes and I don't want to pull the brakes. There's a couple companies that make a forged wheel and an 18 that'll fit over the brakes. Right now I have 19s, so I'm thinking about going with them wheels to get to, you know, drop to an 18 and get more sidewall, but I don't know how much it's gonna help, to be honest. Factory, these come 19s on the front, 20 on the back. So whenever I went to black wheels, I did 19s on the back as well to already get more sidewall, but it's, it's still not enough. I really didn't do much visual mods to this car. The only thing that I've really changed is I blacked out the corner marker lights front and back and I changed the Z06 badges on the fender because they were chrome. The Z is color matched to the car now. And then I added diffuser fins on the back of it, blacked out the taillights. That's basically all that I did for this thing aesthetically. So as far as mods to the engine, it has a Haltec intake to a KTEC 103 millimeter throttle body. The blower's ported, uh, the snout's opened up to a 103 as well. It's got a 2.3 supercharger pulley, a 9% overdrive crank pulley for more boost, a Weapon X track attack heat exchanger, and the Granatelli expansion tank for added coolant capacity. The Which valve covers are Weapon X's valve covers. They were ground for gap ties, which is what the plate is on the car as well. Mm -hmm. Blake did an excellent job with this. I mean, you, you look at the engine bay, catch can routings, all of the wiring for the nitrous, the methanol. Unless you really know what the car is supposed to look like stock, you can't tell that it was ever messed with. Nice. The only thing that catches your eyes is the nitrous express lid and the lines for the nitrous. Cook's headers, catalyst, X-pipe to the factory 
mufflers. The factory mufflers on these cars have the NPP valves in them. You can close them, nice. make the car quiet, open them, make the car loud. Nice. I have the fuse pulled, so it's always loud. car has a Texas Speed Stage 3 cam in it. It's stock head, stock bottom end. It has a direct port methanol setup on it. It's an Elkey control pump with controller and then nitrous express solenoids and nozzles. The nitrous kit is nitrous express. It has nitrous spray bars for direct port nitrous. It has its own dedicated fuel cell for the nitrous. It's a nitrous outlet fuel cell holding C16 fuel. The car's tuned on E85. It has a flex fuel sensor tune on it. The car will automatically adjust for E85%. In the spring, we'll get them out. We'll burn the fuel out of the tank. We'll convert back over to E85. It's as simple as filling the tank and the car adjusts. That's we awesome. run all summer on E85 and in the fall, whenever the temps start dropping, E85% starts going down at the pumps. We run them as dry as we can get fill it up with pump 93 we'll run one or two tanks out just to flush the system and park them for the winter i have hp tuner software that's what the car was tuned with the car was built and tuned from blake at top speed sensing in cincinnati ohio he did two tunes on the car so i have a street tune which is all motor and 50 shot tune and then i have my race tune with the money shot the 150 shot Why'd you start with a Corvette? Have you always been a Corvette fan or was this just something I was, that grew on you? I was never a really big Corvette fan until the C7 came out. My dream car the whole way growing up as a kid, I always wanted a Viper. I was going to buy a brand new Viper ACR. I went and looked at one. I'm a bigger guy. It was not comfortable to be in. This was second on the list. I really like these as well. I went, sat in one and I'm like, yeah, this is way better. I didn't want to go Camaro. My wife has the CTSV, so I kind of wanted to get into a different platform for where she was at basically just a street car i really don't race it a lot i don't road course if i go to the drag strip it's once or twice a year i didn't even go at all this year i take it out i have fun on the street i go cruise with friends go down to the city hang out you know make some hits down in mexico and that's about it would you ever get rid of it? Probably not. I mean, everything has its price. If I had to get rid of it, someone would have to give me the money to go buy a McLaren 720S, and it's probably not happening. <laughs> <so>. <laughs>